in July this year, Taylorsville City will complete our 17th year. As I've reflected over those years, I see that we've grown a great deal and that we've progressed in many ways. However, in some areas, we have not progressed as much as we would like. Today, I will review some of the accomplishments from the past year, and then I would like to address some of the current issues before us, and finally, I will focus on the goals and initiatives for moving the city forward. <clears throat> in 2012, we elected to become full members of the Unified Police Department. <clears throat> the result of that decision has been uh, an increase in police capacity and coverage at a lower cost, and it did not take long for us to see the value of the added resources of the UPD um, to yield benefits with operations such as the one that enabled us to apprehend a bank robber suspect that was spotted in Cottonwood Heights and caught here in Taylorsville after a brief chase along I-215. We can cite many, many illustrations of the efficiency and effectiveness that is the result of increased resources and interjurisdictional capabilities of the Unified Police. Perhaps the, the greatest unseen advantage to this membership is the fact that we have turned over administration of the police department and direction of the Taylorsville Police to the professionals. We have ex uh, to the professionals who have expertise in that area, allowing our city staff to attend to administrative issues within the city. <clears throat> In 2012, also we continued our association as full contract members of the Unified Fire Authority. <clears throat> also, in the last year it came to our attention, however, that there were two critical needs uh, with our fire protection and emergency medical responses. First, Station 117 down here on Redwood Road is, uh, we found to be seriously inadequate for today's modern equipment. It is structurally inadequate for a seismic event as well. Second. The southern portions of our city are somewhat underserved and too heavily reliant upon mutual aid from neighboring cities. And so I will address our goals for dealing with those two deficiencies in critical public safety a little later in my address. Also in 2012, the long awaited and perhaps long dreaded flex lanes here on 5400 South became active. Although they have only been functioning for a few months, we have received a great deal of feedback from citizens. Most realize that although there is a learning curve uh, associated with the concept, once you get used to it, they seem to like it. And reports are that traffic and mobility on 5400 South have improved. In June of 2011, a section of, two, of uh, 1300 West, just south of 5400 South, washed out in a heavy rainstorm. <clears throat> it was deemed to be unsafe for travel because of the steep embankment that uh, led down to the canal adjacent to the roadway and the high number of utility lines buried in the roadway uh, that were threatened, we were forced to shut down the roadway for several months. Late last year, we completed reconstruction of that segment of the, of the roadway that included boxing in several hundred feet of the canal, stabilizing the slope, and resetting barricades along the roadway. And we are now working with Congressman Matheson and his office to get emergency relief funds from FEMA to reimburse the city for a portion of that cost. In 2012, the City Council approved funds to improve approximately 2,000 linear feet of roadway along 4100 South, east of Redwood Road. There have been numerous traffic accidents along this stretch of roadway where cars actually ended up in people's backyards. Some of you may be here that ended up with a car in your yard. We have now almost completed the construction of new barrier curb and gutter, regrading of the recovery zone between the roadway and the properties, and installation of concrete walls that will provide protection from errant vehicles, additional safety against intruders, privacy from the, privacy from the busy street, and beautifies that section of our roadway. Also, through our partnership with the West Valley Animal Shelter, Shelter and Best Friends Animal Society of Utah, we set a goal to achieve a no-kill status at our shelter within one year. I'm pleased to report to you today that since we set this goal last June, we have had three months of, of achieving no-kill uh, when over 90% of the animals coming into the shelter were saved. We are well on our way to becoming a certified no-kill shelter uh, well ahead of our goal of, being, of one year. <clears throat> Excuse me. In June, we completed construction of our Veterans Memorial located right out in front here. 
And I might add, we used almost exclusively donated funds, no, no taxpayer funds to build that. And we were selected to host, uh, once again, the annual Veterans Day Parade for an additional three years because of our efforts to complete that. Also in 2012, we acquired the Labrum Park, approximately nine acres uh, situated on the Jordan Canal Road uh, between I-15 and 6200 South, this also at no cost to the city. This was done as part of an overall master plan to improve safety for the residents along 6020 South and to increase park space in the city. We are now in the process of reconstructing the roadway uh, that goes around the park to connect with the North Jordan Canal Road and to provide residents a safe way to exit their neighborhood without having to brave the crossing of Redwood Road right where the I-215 traffic is exiting. Now, while this is not an all-inclusive uh, list of 2012, it does highlight many of the significant accomplishments of the year. So I'd now like to take a moment and turn our focus to current issues. <clears throat> First off, I'm pleased to report that once again, Taylorsville has received a favorable audit from the independent auditors hired by the City Council. What this means to our citizens is that they can be confident that the financial interests of the city and their taxpayer dollars are being responsibly and carefully managed. Taylorsville continues to operate on one of the lowest, if not the lowest, per capita budget of any comparable size city in the state. This can only be attributed to an organization of volunteer committees that is unmatched in any other city. We have 10 volunteer committees and over 300 active volunteers that advise the administration and the city council on issues such as public safety, ordinance review, budget, leisure, and recreation activities, to name only a few of those. Now, since we are recognizing volunteers in the community, I would be remiss not to recognize our youth city council, many of whom are here representing or um, supporting us today. These I found to be some of the finest youth Taylorsville has to offer and that volunteer their time. They work behind the scenes, they support virtually every activity we sponsor, and it's not as if they don't have anything else to do. All of these youth are top students in their schools, they are active in a number of activities at school, and they are involved in service projects on their own, on, service projects on their own, as well as as a body of youth council. I was proud to accompany these youth at the annual day with the legislature last month, and I will once again, as I have for the last seven years, uh, along with my wife, uh, accompany these youth to Logan, Utah, where they will compete with approximately 30 other youth city councils from around the state in the annual Youth City Council Leadership Institute. <clears throat> I am also pleased to report, and while cautiously optimistic at the same time, that revenue from sales tax has been trending upward at approximately 5.5% per quarter for five consecutive quarters. We view this as a promising but fragile economic indicator. Let's talk about bus rapid transit. For several years, Taylorsville has been part of a joint venture along with Murray, UTA, UDOT, and our own Salt Lake uh, Community College to develop what we are calling the Taylorsville Murray Bus Rapid Transit Project. I am pleased to announce that we have completed the corridor analysis. We've developed a preferred alignment and have been awarded $4 million that will go towards the design development and the right-of-way acquisition for this project. We feel this project will be a tremendous tool for the more than 17,000 students that attend the Salt Lake City Community College Taylorsville campus on a daily basis. It is an excellent way, <clears throat> excellent way of reducing pollutants in our atmosphere and will be an opportunity for the city to improve and beautify one of our key transportation corridors. <clears throat> Marco Auto um, Center, as soon as the weather will permit, uh, we will be breaking ground on the new Marco Auto Center located at Redwood Road and approximately 4300 South. This new Taylorsville business will be located within a designated redevelopment area and will put a new revenue generating business on a site that is currently run down and blighted. The new development will also include a Meineke Auto Service and Repair Center. <clears throat> Next is the West Point Center. That's uh, when UDOT constructed, West Point Center is at 54 North South Bangor Highway. When UDOT constructed the continuous flow intersection on Bangor Highway at 54 North South, they removed the ramp, uh, um, the, the ramp off the Bangor Highway that provided access to Kmart and to the West Point Shopping Center. Ultimately, almost the entire shopping center has gone dark 
due to lack, lack of access. In 2010, the City Council approved an economic development bond aimed at pumping life back into that center. We have negotiated with the UDOT and will complete a mid-block signal on 5400 South as a front entrance to the site, along with the signal on 4015 West as a rear access. The result is that we have recently received a letter of intent from an anchor tenant interested in relocating into the center. And the same tenant has also expressed a desire or an interest in a second location within the city. <coughs> now, as I said, let's revisit <coughs> the fire and emergency medical. <coughs> Briefly, I mentioned the economic challenges about the uh, fire and medical. But I've mentioned the economic challenges of the past few years has caused us to defer some much needed upgrades to our fire and our emergency medical response services. Last year, the UFA outlined a plan to upgrade power, <coughs> excuse me, manpower at stations 117 on Redwood and 118 here behind me, and to reconstruct station 117, and all the time to pursue acquiring property for a third station in Taylorsville, preferably in the southern part of the city. As an elected body, the council has identified public safety as their number one priority. But the cost to the city to build two new stations, along with the increased manpower needed, is daunting. We can conservatively, conservatively estimate that to construct each new station, exclusive of the land acquisition, will cost up to $4, four million each. And to add the needed manpower will cost approximately $1.2 million annually. Under our current model, these costs would have to be borne by the city along with any capital improvements or maintenance costs that the stations may, may require on an ongoing basis. In an effort to provide the needed service to the, service to the city at a lower cost, we met with UFA senior staff in January and proposed an alternative. It was our idea to reconstruct station 117, not where it currently is located, but at a, at a, at a site further to the south in order to better provide for the currently underserved south side of the city and to reconstruct it as a hybrid station. What I mean by that is a station that could house enough equipment and manpower for two stations <clears throat> instead of a single station. Last week at City Council meeting, Chief Michael Jensen of the UFA reported that after doing the necessary due diligence and financial, financial analysis, they have determined that this approach would provide the service we need while saving approximately $2 million of city dollars. The UFA is now in the process, process of investigating pieces of property that would accomplish this goal. <clears throat> now, on this year's ballot in November is a referendum that will determine whether Taylorville becomes a member of the Salt Lake Valley Fire District or if we continue to contract with the UFA as we currently do. It is my opinion that the city is better served in the long, in the long term and it would be more economical for the city to be part of the fire district. Here are some brief statistics that I will cite to support my opinion. If we do not join the district, we still must address the current deficiencies. The cost to bring our fire and emergency medical response up to standard, which is estimated at between seven and eight million dollars, will have to be borne by the city. Even by choosing the more economical hybrid station, it would cost the city $5 million to construct a new station exclusive of the real estate acquisition cost. By joining the district, they would build the new station at their cost. To increase staffing to the needed levels will cost the city an additional $1.2 million per year in equipment and manpower. That's an ongoing cost. If we join the district, they pick up the cost. Under our current contract, capital costs and major renovation costs to, each, to existing stations are the responsibility of the city. If we join the district, again, the district picks up that responsibility. As I've said, public safety is our number one responsibility, and it's the number one responsibility of government. Under our current model, our services are below standard, our fire and emergency medical services. At least one station is dangerously inadequate, and we are heavily reliant on mutual aid from neighboring cities. If we remain as we are, the city will be forced to bond for construction of a new fire station, and our annual contract with the UFA will increase to provide the additional staffing at our two stations. <clears throat> now, opponents of the fire district have said that by joining the district, your taxes, taxes will be higher than they are now, which is correct. But what they have not realized and not explained or analyzed 
is that unless we elect or unless we choose or elect allow our services to further deteriorate and if, unless we ignore the needs of station 117 our taxes are going to go up even more than they would by joining the district there is a cost to provide for public safety okay let's talk about the city center property we have been in ongoing talks with an entity that has identified city hall property here as their preferred location to construct their operations center this end user would propose to purchase a portion of the city center property at a cost of approximately a million dollars. And if all goes well, we could possibly see them breaking ground before the end of the year. <clears throat> Customer service. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> <We're doing that. clears throat> at the end of the day, it is the city's responsibility to serve our customers and our stakeholders. To that end, I have met with each department head to discuss how we can make doing business in Taylorsville easier and friendlier. I have also tasked them with becoming as paperless as possible and therefore becoming more environmentally friendly. During the next 12 months, we will be investigating areas to improve our website such that many, if not most, uh, transactions with the city can be done from in front of your home computer without having to make an appointment or a trip to City Hall. This could range from entering a plea in a justice court uh, hearing to submitting plan sets for new developments online and then receiving the red line reviews back electronically. <clears throat> and <clears throat> under the miscellaneous category, I am cautiously optimistic in announcing that we are working closely with interested tenants at a number of other locations around the city that include the Westwood Center um, on 4700 South and just off I-215 at Plaza 5400 here at Redwood Road and uh, 5400 South, and at the Family Center, which is on Redwood Road between 5400 South and I-215 Interchange, in addition to those others that I've already mentioned. <clears throat> now let's progress on to the upcoming year, our goals and our initiatives. A year ago when we turned 16 years old, Mayor Wall, whom I should recognize came in late, fashionably late, I might say, Mayor Wall compared the city to his youth when he turned 16, which was a frightening thing. <laughs> now we are turning 17, and if I can continue that same euphemism, when I was 17, I graduated high school and began to realize that now I had, determined, had to determine what I wanted to be when I grew up. I can borrow wisdom from an ancient letter to the Corinthians, which reads, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So to continue that euphemism, we can ask, now that we are 17, what do we want to be when we grow up? Again, we have much cause for optimism. We are also keenly aware that this year will be a challenging year for us. For a number of years, we have sponsored a strategic planning meeting where we have invited the public and our senior staff to attend a half-day event on Saturday to establish key, key goals and initiatives for the city. These have been organized into a 10-year strategic vision document that we update every year and that we use as a guideline to each year's goals and each year's budget. We held that public planning meeting last November and on this Friday we are scheduled to spend a day-long retreat with senior staff, with the city council, <coughs> excuse me, and to begin molding that strategic vision into this year's budget. Now through my years on the city council and now during the time that I have served as mayor, I have been clear that my priorities for the city are public safety, economic development, and neighborhood revitalization. We must focus on public safety because that is a key obligation of government. Once we are satisfied that we have done that properly, we must then focus on economic development as a means of preserving quality of life in the city and stabilizing our tax base. Because of difficult econ economic times, four, or for four of the last five budget sessions, we have chosen to reduce costs and services, restrict spending, and tighten our belts as a means to avoid tax increases. In past years, we have missed out on some opportunities because we were either unprepared or unwilling to act to take advantage of such opportunity. As Sir Winston Churchill once said, if we fail to learn the lessons of history, we are doomed to repeat them. The challenge, therefore, is how do we take advantage of the opportunities now before us 
without placing too great a financial burden upon our citizens. <clears throat> as we know, we are in an extremely competitive marketplace. However, as I noted earlier in this address, our sales tax revenues have been trending upward for more than a year. Taylorsville enjoys an excellent bond rating and bond rates are low. As we learned last year with the 1300 West reconstruction that I addressed earlier, there are excellent contractors out there willing to give excellent construction prices. Now, we must be willing to make decisions and pull the trigger on initiatives that will shape the future of Taylorsville for years to come. If we fail to act, as Sir Winston Churchill said, then we are unknowingly shaping our future for years to come, but not necessarily in a progressive way. <clears throat> there are those that advocate that we should cut salaries, cut staff, run the city on a shoestring budget. That is not the vision I have for my city. As I have previously stated, we, are already, we already operate our city on the lowest number of, of employees per capita than other comparable cities. <clears throat> Look around us, excuse me. <clears throat> Look around us at the cities we are competing with. West Valley City revitalized the Valley Fair Mall and attracted a major hotel chain to the area. Murray City did a similar revitalization of Fashion Place Mall and Sandy recently attracted one of the largest outdoor sporting goods retailers in the country to their city. Those were all positive results and positive additions to their cities that would not have happened on a shoestring budget. My vision is that we can achieve similar success in Taylorsville, but we not, must not repeat the mistakes of the past. We must now stand ready to invest in ourselves, in our businesses, and in our neighborhoods. <clears throat> Businesses want to locate in communities that take pride in themselves. And people want to live in neighborhoods that are safe and attractive. For that reason, we have assembled a neighborhood revitalization team as a subset of our economic development team. And I've, I have instructed them to develop a plan that works hand in hand with our master economic development plan aimed at neighborhood revitalization. This initiative is already underway. We are enlisting planning interns to take part in a citywide neighborhood inventory that is rating neighborhoods on items such as streetscape, sidewalk condition, landscaping, code enforcement, crime, and a number of other items. A color-coded rating system will be developed and, and integrated into our GIS mapping system where actions will be, be prioritized. As part of this initiative, I want to make sure our unified police department officers have more of a presence in our community and in our nine elementary schools. We will be starting a program, uh, oops, uh, you almost got away early, to help teach values, accountability, anti-bullying, and self-esteem. We will also focus on traditional law enforcement concerns of drug awareness, gang resistance, and stranger danger. I have charged our ordinance review committee to pursue organization of neighborhood community councils to better engage with neighborhoods and help implement these initiatives. I have instructed Lisa Schwartz, our emergency management specialist, to work closely with this team to assist neighborhoods to organize and become part of the city's global emergency management plan. And I have asked Pam Roberts, executive director of the Wasatch Front Recycling District, to work with us and develop a plan that will make neighborhood cleanup dumpsters available to us more frequently than simply once a year. We are optimistic that there are a number of economic development in initiatives that are very close to being successful at this time. I have told our economic development staff that we need to see dirt turning this year on several projects, and we'd love to see announcement on a couple of other significant projects. The, two fam <coughs> the Family Center and its companion, uh, Plaza Fit for 400, are key to, key to the success of the city. We have been working diligently with the owners of these properties and their brokers, and along with our planning and economic development departments, and have developed some innovative site plans that will completely reinvent those two sites similar to what we have seen our neighboring cities do. Of course, we are cognizant of the fact that all these things must be done within the financial constraints available to us. I have therefore asked our department heads to prepare their budgets this year, this year as flat as they can. And I've instructed the economic development staff to develop innovative funding and strategies to be able to take advantage of the opportunities before us. In the upcoming weeks, beginning with our strategic planning retreat this Friday, we will be working closely with senior staff, city council members, and committee members, and along with expert consultants 
to develop and prioritize the strategies to not only accomplish our public safety, e economic, and neighborhood revitalization goals, but a fiscally responsible means of bringing them to fruition. In closing, the city of Taylorsville has made significant strides in recent years and months. I firmly believe that working together as a team with our citizens and businesses as partners, the best is yet to come. Thank you.